What's up guys, welcome back to Let's Play some Goku Basra 3! Alright, so a couple of things happened between the end of the last video and the beginning of this one, the most obvious of which is that I lost a critical amount of footage. Um, I'll actually pull back the curtain a little bit and tell you guys exactly what happened. So I actually recorded most of Ieyasu's campaign all in one sitting, and uh, for some reason I guess the file size was too large or something corrupted with the data after the fact, so I lost the beginning portion of the battle. So I went ahead and re-recorded the first fight, um, and unfortunately this is where I ended up in the second fight after all the footage was all said and done. So unfortunately we have already moved on, we didn't get to see the uh, dialogue with the screen transitions there, so I'll just go ahead and cover some of the adjustments to my setup that I made. <clears throat> so I've equipped some uh, accessories, and I've equipped a new weapon that we unlocked after the end of the previous fight. There's a little golden uh, bracers there that are used for, for punching. They're, they're, they look pretty cool and they gave him a significant strength increase, which is nice. Uh, we're moving on to Hojo's map this time, Ujimasa Hojo, who is uh, someone we've seen in uh, the previous games, Name, namely in Basra 1. We fought him like two or three times in Basra 1. And uh, his castle is quite a bit different in this game than it was in the previous games. Uh, it's much more how I envisioned it. We're going up against the, uh, the Triforce army, apparently, there, as you saw from the banner before we changed it to the Tokugawa flag. Um, another thing worth pointing out, uh, I didn't really get a chance to show this off much in Saika's map, but in this map you can see some of the commander units are other named people. Like they're, They are other named warlords who are just not as important. They may be people that belong to the same clan. So you may see um, like the same clan name on certain characters and things like that. Like you might see another uh, Motonari if we're on Mori's map. We may see another Tokugawa uh, with our army. But that allows us to have uh, secondary ally characters that you can actually pick and customize. So we will unlock certain secondary ally characters throughout the game. We can equip them between missions to give us certain passive abilities between maps and it's pretty helpful so uh, the one we have on right now is I don't remember his name but he I think he has a passive ability that gives us more money or something like that at the end nothing super great but I'll they can give you buffs when you use your boss or attack if they are in prox if you're in proximity with them and we'll get some pretty cool characters later on so obviously the Hojo army has a ninja core because who doesn't have a ninja core in this game and uh, Hojo has contracted the help of Kotaro Fuma, who we saw in the previous game, so we'll be fighting him uh, for a change now. So he's not with um, Matsunaga Hisahide. Matsunaga Hisahide does not really appear in this game, but he does. He almost exclusively appears in the spotlight in uh, the expansion of Basra 3, Basra 3 Utage. Uh, which is very much um, Matsunaga Hisahide's game. And uh, so I have a couple different Number secondary abilities, or arts as they're called in this game now. So if I hold down R1, I can do a charging attack and do a ground pound, which is pretty cool. It's very similar to what Ieyasu did in the opening cinematic for the game. I try to keep the combos as fluent as possible and easy to follow when watching. Um, so that way it doesn't look visually repetitive. Uh, it's difficult to do that with a Musou game, obviously, because it is going to be visually repetitive no matter what. But I try to mix things up in slight variations as much as possible, because that's, for one, what looks better to the viewer and what's more fun for me. I don't like to use the same exact move over and over again. Even in a shooter game, I don't like to use the exact same weapon over and over and over again when I can mix things up, especially in a game with a full arsenal like, like Quake or something like that. Alright, so time to fight Kotaro Fumo. So he only has one star here because we've captured pretty much the entire map. We're going to use our uh, Fury Drive Gauge. I could never match he's, uh, he's actually quite powerful. He's really challenging to defeat. And he almost killed me in my test run through this map, so I'm going to have to be pretty careful. That's why I started out so strong there. Uh, Kotaro Fumo being a ninja is very powerful. I don't think Kotaro Fuma is technically a real person. I think that's just a uh, generic ninja name that's sort of passed down throughout fiction and uh, literature. 
But um, yeah, like I said, in, in Boss Rush 2 Heroes, he was mainly allied with uh, Matsunaga Hisahide. His first appearance in the Boss Rush anime is actually in Season 1. The very, I think it's in the second or third episode, very early on when Takeda Shingen goes after Hojo, and uh, he that's the part where he ends up riding the horse, or the two horses, up the side of the castle walls in one of the most ridiculous and over-the-top scenes that define that show. And uh, Kotaro Fumo was already allied with Hojo at that time, and uh, he was able to use him to uh, briefly fend off Takeda Shingen before uh, Takeda Shingen sent him flying, and he was never seen again for the rest of the series. Um, he showed up again later on with Matsunaga Hisahide, and I think he showed up again in the movie, if I'm not mistaken. I know he he showed up, he had quite a bit more screen time in Basra Judge End, obviously, as it pertains to Basra 3, but nobody watched Judge End. Judge End did not get an English dub, either. It didn't get an English dub, it never got a, um, to my knowledge, I don't think it even ever got a Blu-ray or DVD release. It was pretty much... Released, released in Japan, simulcast by Crunchyroll, uh, not Crunchyroll, Funimation one time, and then everybody forgot that it existed. Probably for the better, because it was not good, but we will be talking about exactly why it was not good as we go through the plot. So, uh, this is a rant I've been wanting to have for years, ever since that anime came out, because that anime came out when Basura 4 was almost out. So it really didn't make much sense for them to go back and do a Basura 3 anime unless they were setting up for like a Basura 4 anime or something. Uh, well, we already had a perfectly good adaptation of Basura 3 with The Last Party, with the movie, even though it's not the same continuity. It's hard to make it the same continuity when this is the really the first game in the series that ha that's had a linear narrative. The other games in the series have had, oh well, whatever happens, happens, you know, it's this individual character story, you know, alternate storylines and routes and timelines and things like that. Basura 3 is meant to have an overarching story, so we can't really say that, you know, when you try to make an anime, obviously you can't make that canon with every single possible outcome in the game, so they did really good with the storyline in Basura uh, Samurai Kings, the anime season 1 and 2, and the movie was basically, you know, the cherry on top. So, I don't understand why they even made Judge End in the first place. <laughs> this is basically the point I'm making, but I will get to exactly my criticisms with it whenever we have more time. So, we're going to be fighting Hojo now. Hojo is not playable in this game, although he was playable in Boss Row 2. To my knowledge, he's Ice Elemental. He has one outpost still in this, or one command post still in this, in the very top of the, of the uh, castle there. Where we we may go ahead and capture that. It's right over here in the corner. Uh, we don't necessarily need to because we've already dealt pretty much a good amount of damage to him. Okay, we're gonna use our boss or attack here, and uh, our ally manages to increase our defense with his his boost whenever we use our boss or attack. It's one of the nice things about our ally. And if our ally gets if our ally runs out of health, we can actually revive them too, which you'll see later on. Okay, so another new mechanic about Basra 3 I haven't talked about is these uh, these cross slash uh, contests here, where you get a you get a um, you and a boss can end up getting into a duel like that, and you have to mash the square button to come out victorious. And depending on how strong, in terms of physical strength, the enemy is, will determine on how difficult it is to win one of those. So winning one against Hojo is incredibly easy because Hojo is an old man. Winning one against Shimatsu or uh, Honda Tadakatsu, though, who have like over three, three thousand, like thirty thousand strength or whatever. No, thirty thousand health is how much health they have, but they have obscene amounts of strength. So defeating them in a contest like that is really difficult. You really got to mash that button. And even against Tadakatsu, you might as well just walk away. He'll find someone. But luckily, he's on our side as Tokugawa Ieyasu. So many adventures. I think it's brought me here. <laughs> Such is life. And that is why it is my destiny to unite us all and unite our country! <laughs> <laughs> 